Okay, we're live. Okay, we're live. All right. Okay, hey everybody, we I'm have definitely three... happy to be here. All right, we have three cases tonight. Uh, one is unsolved and gut wrenching. Uh, getting a little bit of an echo on my end. Um, I'll just try to play with it. So this one is unsolved and gut wrenching. The second is tragic and bizarre, and the third is fugitive with a reward. Um, um, I got to pause for a second, April. I'm having I have a long delay, or I'm hearing my own voice back after 20 seconds. No idea why. Okay. Uh, not sure what to do about it. Anyways, I want to introduce April Lee, the newest member of our team and part of our Vegas crew and also from Detroit. April grew up in Detroit and had a lot of first -hand experience with crime. She was in Vegas five years ago as five years chief of police and the mayor on community awareness programs. Her passionate interest in true crime is largely driven by identifying with the victims from her own experience. She launched in thing called the Unpainted Me Poetry as an outlook for victims. She's also a stand-up comic and we'll post a schedule of her national appearances. Uh, we'll get it up there soon. So welcome to the team, April. Thank you for having me. And and I hope they were able to hear you because I heard like every other uh word you were saying, but I kind of got it. The, can you hear me clearly? Or am I kind of echoing as well? Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a delay. Let me try to. I can. Yep, I can hear you. Let me just change one thing on the set. All right, let's try this. How does this sound? Talk a little bit more. I think that's a little can, better. I can hear yeah. some things, and then some things, it was kind of skipping. Yeah, I'm still getting a little. Right. Uh, all right, I'll keep talking. I'm getting a delay that goes on. My own voice comes in about 10 seconds afterwards. But that was better. They didn't skip. Okay, let's see how how's this sound. All right, I think this Maybe sounds good. I think it's fixed now. All right, all right, good. All right. Okay, guys, thanks. Yeah, uh -huh. we're here with April, the newest member of our team. And welcome, April. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in true crime? Awesome. Well, I am definitely happy uh, to be here today to get started uh, telling us some stories and try to figure some things out, right? Um, but growing up in Detroit, I seen a lot. I heard a lot. Um, didn't think that was even special. It was actually normal until I started traveling to different states, talking to different people um, and finding out, you know, uh, everybody don't fight when they're angry, right? Um, some people don't use aggression. Some people never uh, seen or heard of murder, right? Other mm -hmm. than on TV. Um, me personally, when I was a little girl, my cousin's dad was murdered. We were very young. Um, this was on New Year's Eve. And in Detroit, New Year's Eve, a lot of shooting, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, um, Growing up, that's always just been my fear. So never to this day enjoyed New Year's Eve. Uh, then my cousin at 16, he was murdered uh, in a car with five people, four people, right? So he was shot in the back of his head. And I think like a year before he was shot in the back of his head, he was shot in the chest and he survived 
Um, so, like I said, uh, uh, just a lot of stuff that's unfortunate, mm-hmm. but I lived through it, right? Yeah. Um, I, I know a lot about grief, losing uh, my twins. They were born mm-hmm. premature, and then ultimately they passed away. Yeah. Um, so I just know a little bit about grief, right? Everybody, grief is different, but yeah. my fun is freaking. Coming out of it, you know, I did find some happiness. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, found some positive ways to deal with things um and definitely some stories that's unsolved in detroit that i want to share right Mm -hmm. so that's just a little bit about me you found some really good stories to go over here um one of them is uh, they're all tragic uh but one of them involves a fugitive we'll get to that one last but the first story you have a very personal connection to and it's also unsolved um this is let me bring this up on the screen So this was very difficult to look at this kind of one. Yeah. Um, This was someone you knew personally, Um, right? Julian Mafia. So we call him DJ, AKA DJ. Uh, Yes, 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 yes. I was actually watching it the other day. I watched the clip just to you know, get a refresher. I actually had to find it to send it to you and just crying, crying. Mm -hmm. It it brings back a lot of memories because it's something that never should have happened. Um, I think with the three stories that we're covering tonight, none of them should never should have happened, right? Mm -hmm. But um, DJ, straight A plus student. So we're not talking about straight A, right? Straight A plus student. Uh, where did you go? Oh, sorry. I'm still. I'm just trying to find a picture of. Him. Is this DJ here? Um, Let me see. So, why you look at um for the picture? I just keep talking about him, but uh, he was definitely a straight A plus uh, student, and in our community. Actually, I'm not even gonna go our community. Me personally. I, n- I never met another young man that was a straight A plus student or a straight A student. Um, and j- that's just me personally. Um, a lot of the guys, you know, they wasn't so into the education, but DJ definitely uh, put education first. And so to me, that made him a good role model for my daughter, right? Right. Uh, my daughter also a a student, right? Principal is student. So we're talking about two smart kids, uh, but DJ being a boy and knowing that he wanted to play basketball, he wanted to be a superstar, and he knew that he had to, you know, had a grades to do it. Um, always with a smile, but always serious. Always with a backpack. Always with a backpack. The last time I saw him, um, the week before he passed away, um, I think I was leaving. I was leaving the house, but I was still talking to his mother. That's him and my daughter right there. Um, That's her sweet 16th birthday. Mm -hmm. And he came, uh, participated. He sung uh, Michael Jackson. Uh, What was it? Pretty, well, P.T.? Uh-uh. Yeah, so he participated. Never forget that night, and you can see the smile on their face that they enjoyed mm-hmm. themselves. You can tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That's one of the last pictures that we have of him alive. Um, oh. But the last time I seen him, I was leaving the house, and he walked up because I was still talking to his mom, and he walked up the street with his book bag, and I turned around because he kind of scared me, and I was like, "Wow, you just getting so big." And that's the last time I've seen him. Um, and he, and so, he was yeah, a, a 4.0 student I'm, and um, a scholar and, and, and an athlete that was dreaming of an NBA career, right? Definitely. Um, his mom, and we're going to probably have to do an update on this. We we do. Um, I'm crying early. She told me, don't cry because it's not professional. And I'm like, listen, one of the things I like about this show is that I get to come on here and be myself. And I really Absolutely. wanted to present that. Um, but he, he was just a positive. He was he was very positive. Right. His funeral was on my birthday. My birthday is April Fool's Day. 
Um, that's in my personality too, very upbeat, energy, fun. And to know that his funeral was on my birthday, uh, that that hurt, you know, that that hurt very bad. Uh, wow. So yeah, with the straight A plus, you know, he was always striving to do better. His mom actually, uh, that was a, that's a picture of her. Uh, she, many, many, many rewards that she wanted us to show everybody today that we I just didn't have time to get everything. But I'm talking about many, many rewards. Everything that he did, he did and gave it a hundred percent, despite all of the things that was going on in his community um do, do you have the clip can you play the clip of uh the day that he actually um you know passed and tell a little bit about the story no i don't have a clip line oh, up, have a clip up for him. Uh, the, the one that you just showed um you just, you just showed it but you didn't press play it was the one from i think it was click on to when they told the, the story of the mother and how everything happened. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Sure. Hold on. Yeah, I can play that. Hold on one second. Got to share okay. screen. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. Wait, I can give you this hundred grand, or I can teach you how to make this every single month. You see, this is exactly. A somber moment just a short time ago at Detroit Central High School as balloons released into the air honoring a student whose life was lost to gun violence. By all accounts, 17-year-old Julian Moffitt was a star earning a four-point GPA, but last week Julian was shot outside a West Side home and did not survive it. Coco McAvoy just spoke with Julian's mother, and this has just got to be anguish for her. Yes, Devin and Kimberly, extremely Kimberly. difficult. We're talking about a 17-year-old high school junior who had dreams of making it into the NBA and wanted to go to Eastern Michigan University and had the grades to get in there. So the community is just grieving the loss of Julian Moffitt, and they honored him today at the high school. At the high school. <laughs> Detroit Central High School's front lawn packed with friends and family of Julian Moffitt, grieving and consoling his mother, Henrietta Palmer. But it does hurt because that's my only child. Palmer says her son had big dreams of being in the NBA. He's been prepping for basketball 10 years of his life at 17. These are just a few of a whole fleet of trophies. Julian was a straight A student. He was very intellectual beyond his years. And he's been that way since he was a baby. And he was reading a paragraph and he just asked me how to pronounce two words. And he was one and a half. So at that moment, I knew my son was special. Palmer says she had a bad feeling when a new group of kids moved into the neighborhood and started picking fights with her son's friends. But Julian didn't want her worrying. And what my son never wanted to do was look me in my eyes and tell me his life was in danger. So she believed Julian died protecting his friends. Palmer is trying to stay strong. I don't have no sorrow, just happy tears. I'm glad I got to share that gift with the world. And she just hopes the community will continue to remember Julian as a gift, a young man with a promising future taken too soon. I could never replace him and his legacy is going to live on forever. And so now I'm here, you know, representing Henry of the Palmer tonight. And I just want to say somebody knows something. And if he died protecting his friends, and maybe you guys were scared at the moment, you're not scared now. And you and you need to say something. And this happened in Detroit. And this was around Finkel area, Hubble area, Coyle, Marlowe. Ooh. And the reason why I'm saying so many streets is because at this point, you you know something, you heard something, you overheard something, you may have known DJ and you have not met another young man that replaces him. And I just feel that uh, somebody needs to speak up. And when they see this, you know, maybe two things that happen. One, they know they involved and they heart gonna stop or two, you know that it's safe now. It's, it's really safe now to go ahead and start speaking up because he didn't deserve this. Loretta, that was her only son. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, she she don't believe in this crime stuff that that I'm doing. And 
she believes that justice will be served. And when the last time she called the Detroit police to see about the case, they told her that the guy that was the detective that was in charge of the case is no longer there. Mm -hmm. And we feel like, well, why he didn't call and say goodbye or say something? He promised to be on top of this case and then he disappeared. And there's so many cases like this where the police feel that they don't have to do anything because they don't have somebody down their throat every day. Mm -hmm. And then there's also other cases where parents have it on their heart and they call the police every day and nothing is being done. So you know what that means, Kevin? Mm -hmm. That's what it we're trying. We're doing a lot right that's, now. That's right. And that's what we're trying to do here. And obviously this is just the first for Detroit on our channel. But we're already, we get tips coming in every day on this channel in Massachusetts. So that's why we're trying to get into other areas and expand the audience because that's what we stand for is trying to put a spotlight on these cases that get forgotten because if we don't or if somebody doesn't there's no pressure on the police and they're, they're overwhelmed i'm not trying to criticize the police but yeah if you don't have pressure out there they're not going to keep these cases it just becomes a file in the back of the draw they're, they're overwhelmed a lot of times you know it is different things involved it could be gangs involved different things that's no excuse you know they have yeah. different task force for different things this case touches my heart because i talk so highly of him and i used him as an inspiration while he was alive why 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 wouldn't i do it while he's gone right. i told everybody look at him this is who you need to strive to be like you know Mm -hmm. And uh, I just feel like the family needs justice. A lot of people need closure. Um, if it's people that's, you know, on Facebook and they're friends with, you know, his mother to follow her grief, to see what she's doing. And you see this, you know, this is just a refresher to bring awareness that nobody has caught the people that murdered DJ in broad daylight when his mother just asked him, would you want to go to the market with me? He said no. And by the time she walked into that market, her son was dead. Well, I give you my word this. We won't forget DJ. And later on, as we can, if we can build an audience, especially where we feel like we're reaching Detroit, we'll bring him up again. And we'll keep putting the word out there to see if something can be done. Because hopefully someone, somebody will get back to us and say, I have some information. And somebody has some information, whether you want to be anonymous, whether you want to tell somebody else and have them be anonymous, but somebody has some information and this is not going to go away. Mm -hmm. It's not. I'm going to definitely uh, put it in some of the Detroit community channels that I still frequent, um, you know, and, and this is good for me because I always tell people, find an outlet. I, I'm a comedian. I'm a poet. I'm everything. But you know what? Can't nobody tell me where to drop my tears. You know, I'm going to drop them where they need to be dropped at. And that's what keeps people moving forward. I, you know, it's a lot of people out here that need justice. And just because we not where we need to be as a channel, um, I don't even think Detroit Most Wanted is where they need to be. Because it's people that's going to hear these stories now for the first time. That's right. That's right. Um, well, we're great. It's great to have you because I really do think that, you know, I was, you know, I've never been someone that believes in destiny or fate and stuff like that, but a lot of weird things have been happening with this channel really quickly. So maybe there is something that's meant to happen here. And maybe we're meant to help find some kind of justice for somebody like DJ. I don't know. Maybe that's a naive thought, but I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance that. I know it's a chance. I, I think it might, it, it might work. And at the end of the day, it just shows that these type of things never go away. Right. And it doesn't always have to be the mother, the father. Um, I'm no blood relation to him, but I love them just the same, you mm -hmm. know, just the same. And I, I'll never, every birthday that I've had since his death has been bittersweet. And this, this seems like a kid who just really wanted to escape that neighborhood and have a productive, successful life. That's why he made sure he had perfect grades in school and was working out to be good on the team, to be great on the team. But you're torn because you're you don't want to abandon your friends, and if somebody's threatening your friends, you're not going to leave them. So whatever happened, so, he seems to have been just kind of. Hard. 
Yeah. And then for his mother, you know, she 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 she's very talented. Uh she can sing, she mm. can rap. Uh she definitely mentors me. She's one of uh the only people that can put me in my place <laughs> when I need to be put there. Um, but watching that video and when she, remember when she called me that night and told me, you know, we were in a conversation and she said, Well, you know, DJ passed away. And uh, I couldn't get up and go to work the next morning. You mm. know, I, I just couldn't. So we need to definitely keep pushing forward. Um, you know, Kevin, they might feel like reaching out to you. Reach out to him. You know? yeah. <laughs> Whatever. But at this point, we need some answers. And the message is, uh, you know, every day she had to stop thinking about her son, the whole family, his friends, people that were mm. he went to school with. And we need closure and we need you guys to talk. And it's no excuse at this point. Right. Right. Well, we're going to keep doing oh, more I'm of it. And we'll, we'll come back to it because the personal connection to you, especially, but it is a moving case. I saw the mother's song that she has in her Facebook channel about him. It's very moving. And, you know, she was, he was her only kid. Right. So, um, Yes, and I wish we can play. We definitely have to come back, and maybe, maybe when we come back, excuse me, this is crazy, but maybe when we come back, it could be more of a, you know, we got them type of story. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But she has inspired me in so many ways by singing, by trying to push on, um, and live her life, fulfill her dreams, because she keeps reminding herself that that's what he would have wanted for her. Mm -hmm. They had a very special relationship. And they, they took her only son from her, you know, and she suffers from sickle cell. And that's another thing she don't want to get sick about. It. You know, she wants to mm. be well and she believes um, in Jehovah. And she said that that's who is going to handle it for her. So she definitely has faith. And I want everybody that's watching this, um, you know, if you're a person of faith too, whoever your God is, we can definitely say a prayer because mm. it hurts. It really hurts. And my heart is go out to anybody that lost a child or a loved one. Mm. And you looking for justice right now. Um, I'm definitely with you. I'm with mm. you. Okay. All right. So we'll, let's move on to the next one. Um, we can come back and talk about it again if you want. So, but let's, this is awesome. the case of um, a young woman who was uh, not a young woman, I th but a woman that was found dead in the car, burnt in a trunk of a car, right? Um, mm. This is another. Yeah, that that is sad. I mean, Angela Nelson, right? Let me put her. Yeah. So. And, yeah, th this is crazy is right because there. now you can see the difference of when it's personal and our hearts go out to everybody. She was a mother of, of two. She was a mother of two. Um, and I just believe that she was in the wrong place at the wrong time, right? Well, I or, think from what I read, she became addicted to drugs. And then because of that, fell into prostitution, I think. And so she was with... You know what? Go ahead, yeah. I didn't read about the prostitution, but I did. Uh, her, the, the father of the two kids said that she had got... Uh, into some drugs it, it definitely said pills yeah um and if, yeah. if you in that lifestyle that that could definitely lead to some prostitution and they said that had been going on for like over a year yeah she it started with yeah, um prescription pain pills and then moved mm. on to as it does with a lot of people and then moved on to drugs and so her the the the, the kid's father was either married or in a relationship with another woman but both of them would drive around the streets trying to get her to get in the car with them. They wanted to save her. And um yeah, it, that's what addiction it, does, right? Sad. So yeah. Yeah, it's definitely sad. In, in this case, she was brutally murdered for something that she had absolutely nothing to do with, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and so it's it's crazy because so I guess. She was friends. I'm not sure if she was in a relationship with Rodriguez. Um, but a guy that she was in a relationship with, she was in the in the passenger seat with him, right? Yeah. And so he was ultimately set up because a woman died. So 
this woman who passed away, let me let me get her name. Her name was Jackie Reynolds, right? Yeah. Uh, police said she passed away from an overdose. Mm-hmm. Her kids and some people that she loved felt like it was murder. They felt like somebody had something to do with it, right? So the person was Rodriguez, who just was friends with Angela Nelson, who was murdered. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if they were in a relationship or it was a situation where he said, come right over here with me. But at the same time, he was being set up. Yeah. So that was uh, over to a lady named Felicia Bow's house. So when they got over there, he left her in the car and they, you know, start beating him. Uh, he said that he had to play dead to get away. But when he got away, he didn't warn Angela Nelson, who was in the car, and when they saw that she was in the car, they murdered her. Yeah. You know, um, allegedly, one of the daughters said she's not getting away. Allegedly, she was tortured, then put in the trunk, and then burnt alive. Mm-hmm. And they got initially they got five. Initially. Wow. I think, let's see, they got initially five of the, uh, let's see, let me get the, uh, pull this up here. So, uh, yeah, initially, so this is all six of them, but initially the one at the bottom, uh, middle, the sister, she was the last to be captured. And so, uh, it was U.S. Marshals involved. Uh, and then ultimately they did find her. (laughs) They thought she had fled. I don't know if she fled and, and came back or what. Um, the guy to the upper right on the left. Uh, so the girl Felicia, which is, uh, I believe she, yeah, she's up here to the right. She actually knew she was acquaintance of both Rodriguez, the guy that got set up and the family of the woman who died of the overdose. So they went to her and said, if you see him, you know, I think that he murdered my mom. Let me know when you see him. So I feel that she could have probably did something at that point to maybe stop a murder instead of being accomplished to it. But they didn't murder Rodriguez. They ultimately murdered the young lady in the car, which was Angela Nelson. And she had two daughters. Yeah. What's, um, so whose What's mother, in this in this picture here, whose mother um, was the one that was killed so that the they were taking revenge the two on? Black- yeah, so the two black, uh, the two black ladies, okay, okay. right in there, the middle, it was, uh, it was, it was said to be their mother. Yeah, so that's Simone and Chevelle Reynolds. Now the guy, last name Marlboro, him right here, um, actually, and I'm not sure which one it actually is. So I want to pick out the wrong one, but I read um, within the census statements that he called or he went to Biles and said. You know, I believe that Rodriguez has something to do with the death of my mother. So mm. I'm not sure if it was his mother or just somebody he loved as a mother. But yeah. ultimately, he got 32 years, um, you know, for the tor- torture and the death of Angela Nelson, mm-hmm. which is just tragic. Um, I feel mm. like it's one of the stories I was looking into because it just makes you wonder uh we have eight mutual friends between us, right? Mm-hmm. And it makes you wonder, was there comfort there for the death of her mother? Was there some type of deterrent from the negativity that it was drawing? Because yeah. it just seemed like pure anger and ready to take it out on the world. What do you think? I'm going to bring on a couple of members of our team that want to meet you. Um, so I'm just going to add them to the room, if that's okay with you, Aaron. Uh, this is... Uh, Erin, you've, hey. you've seen her in chat, but now you're meeting her in, in person. And, hey. Uh, hey. And Dave is here, too. Um, hey, Dave. Oh, Dave is muted, so he has to unmute himself. Hey, guys. Um, how are you? Oh, boy. Hi, Hi, guys. This, this is April. You're meeting, them in per- meeting April in person. Hi, April. Hi. It seems like I met you before. We talked so much, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> nice to meet you. All the discord. And Dave, right. Right. And Dave, you know, I'm always a big, a big fan already. Oh, thank you. Much appreciate it. Great show tonight. 
So this is a tragic case here, and uh, it sounds like maybe, maybe the woman was the woman in was the car with somebody off. for maybe drugs or maybe prostitution, or maybe she was just friends with him. And then they went to take revenge on this guy. They connected him to their mother's death, and they brought their friends along, and they beat the hell out of him, thought he was dead, but he played dead, and he managed to escape. But they continued in their rage. And they, it's described as torturing the woman. So I don't know if they were looking for information or just taking more revenge. And they, they, one of the stories said that they burned her alive in the trunk of the car. That's the part that is, 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 I can't get past that. Um, when I was reading in the comments, a lot of people were saying that they deserve the death penalty. You know, we don't have that in Michigan. Um, and I keep telling myself, how angry would I be if someone, you know, was, involved in my mom in my mom's death but i can't see myself going that far to do the things that they did that night mm -hmm. it's it's just very sad yeah yeah it is. it is okay so we have one more case that we want to go over with april this is a really fascinating case that she found where there's a there actually this woman is a fugitive and so there's a the reward is up to five thousand dollars so if you when I bring this up, if you see her, and I think it just went up to ten thousand oh, for up the to people 10, that that does this for the money. I don't do it for the money. I, I want to see her off the streets. I don't want her. You know, she can be over at the Mandalay Bay, right next to me, sipping margaritas on a Sunday. I want her off the streets. Uh, oh, I got the mother. Let's see, oh, women, please. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah. With the Angela one, do you have the the uh the clip to start off with any of the ones from her? Of like when um because it's actually David Carter. So she uh was dating him allegedly for six months. And they said that when they were dating, she was all up under him, right? So that's the red flag that we gonna create. And when he went missing, all of a sudden it was just like, oh, I don't know where he is but she was always very clingy um up under him and as you see she's a very beautiful beautiful lady yeah she was a travel agent so she had and she traveled a lot as a travel agent she must have been checking out deals and stuff like that and for whatever reason i'm not sure if it's known april she killed her boyfriend and dismembered him and put him in got rid of him in what in a sleeping bag or something like that but she got listen caught. she put him in a trash bag and disposed his body from 75 all the way to ohio wow um who does that so and she, let me tell you uh she she'll kill again i just believe Tamara Williams is 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 crazy. You know, I, I've seen stories where people make a mistake and kill you. Now they got to get rid of the body. But to actually dismember this man um, and leave his body the way that she did. And I can't believe she's still out here on, on the run. Do you guys, you see this lady, you got to really look out for her. Uh, because we watch these type of shows and we walk in the club and she could be there. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? No, no, not you. Um, so I'm definitely looking for her. There's another interesting twist on this story, but before we get to that, why do you think she killed her, her, her boyfriend? Is there any theory on that? Can you, do you have, can you pull up a picture or a video of, of him before I tell you? Um, yeah, I think I can scroll this down here. I sent a couple of clips actually. Um, I, I think. That's him right there, right? Yeah, that's him. It's a lot of different pictures. He's a very, very handsome man. Um, I know he has a son named after after him, uh, David Carter Jr. And I've seen the, the pain in, in his eyes. But when, you know, he's a very handsome man, very well-dressed, seems like he has his stuff together. Um, and, and just maybe he was tired of all the clinkiness. The sister said that he, you know, she was always there. Um, you can confuse that with love, but maybe it's a little bit of psychotic um you know yeah but who knows did they, did they find cause of death yeah. ever cause of death ever he was i think they found i don't want to say his torso was missing or it, it 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 was bad so i'm not even sure the, the main thing is another reason um he was a great son his his father is torn to pieces and i don't know the family 
But, um, you know, from the moment he was missing, it was a red flag. This family knew that that was not the normal for him. Um, his dad, you know, at that point, they just wanted him home. Mm -hmm. And then to find out he had been murdered, um, that that that's really, you know, horrible. But she's still missing. Um, so she is wanted by the U.S. Marshals. Um, well, here's I'm the interesting thing. I'm thinking that the tattoo. Go ahead. Well, no, here's the interesting thing. Oh, this is what you first told me about this. It made this case so fascinating. Um, was that you're wondering how she could survive on, as a fugitive all this time. And there was a twist on this story. So let's pull up the twist. And before this, I was thinking maybe she was using her good looks or something because she's a very pretty, pretty girl. So I was thinking that um, or maybe, you know, she's in another country because she is a travel agent um, or just maybe somebody is is really looking out for her. Um, if you feel you innocent, why not talk to the police after all this time is really making you look guilty by just not you know, just disappearing. Um, Sorry, I guys. think if she was dead, we would know, you know. Um, I, I know we have videos about the mother. Um, right, her name was Verdine Day. Yeah. So her mother, and actually this one's saying mother wanted suspect. Is the video there? Uh, I don't have a video, no. Oh, have a video, no. Uh, unless it's on this, is it on this link? I think it is. Let uh, me see. Okay. Show down. All right. became Michigan's first family of we'll law have to go through because we've been here quick. for over a century. We know Detroit, and Detroit knows us. Yeah, I know you, Sam. The Bernstein Advantage. 1-800. That's 1 one of those uh, <laughs> popular attorneys in Detroit. Tonight, Fox 2 has learned about a connection between an allegedly corrupt Detroit union official and a brutal murder from a few years ago. On Monday, we reported that retired Detroit firefighter Birding Day is accused of stealing more than $200,000 from her union, allegedly spending it on lavish trips and other personal expenses. Tonight, sources confirm that Birding Day is also the mother of wanted fugitive Tamara Williams. Now, Williams has been on the run since 2018 for the murder of her former boyfriend, David Carter, from Melvindale. Police say that Williams killed Carter chopped his body into pieces, stuffed those pieces into a sleeping bag, and dumped the remains on the side of I-75 in Ohio. So right now, there's a $5,000 reward for her arrest, and the U.S. Marshals want you to Marshals call this number call. if you have any information. 313. All right. All right. Aaron, did you know about that case? Mm -mm. <clears throat> no, yeah. I've never heard about this one. What about you, Dave? I'm hearing about it. That's why I'm so glad that we can get people like you from different parts of the country to tell us a little bit about some of your local true crime, because we talk a lot about, obviously, our local true crime, but we obviously want to branch out more. So, no, I always love to learn about new cases. No, never heard of it. April 1. And that's why I wanted to. April 1 of the cases. I was going to say, that's why I wanted to bring it. We keep talking. Go ahead, you, Dave. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, April. One of the cases that um, Dave has looked into a lot is I don't. These took place, I think, in the '80s, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. But this was um, the Oakland County murders, or the abduction, uh, child murders out there, right, Dave? Interested in that? Um, it's been a while. Um, you know, I'm not as well versed in it as I once was a few years back, but it's definitely something that's on the burner, um, ready for me and Kevin to pick it back up again and hopefully do some episodes on it. Because honestly, Kev, when you look into it, it could probably be a whole podcast series, you know? So um, you could probably do 10 episodes <clears throat> on all the crazy stuff that happened around that and all the people that were involved and um, people in high positions of power and the crazy little side stories. And um, yeah, we're, we're very interested in that one. It, it just seems so similar to your story that you've investigated with Wayne Chapman. You wrote your book on. Uh, are you familiar with those at all, April? The the Oakland County murders? When, what years? Those were in the 80s, I think, where they abducted these I'm kids. I'm not familiar Entirely, other uh, than what I've been seeing with, with you guys. 
be ready to rule out that people like Chapman who were connected to Chapman may not have had connections to Oakland County as well. I'm not ready to rule that out yet. So. And, and see, just like this story of Tamara Williams, they have did their best to let everybody know, look, this girl did this. She could be anywhere in the world, but you guys don't even know about her, right? And so that's why I picked this story. Sometimes people try to shy away from stories that's been on the Detroit Most Wanted, but we need to keep that face. And after you watch it, actually look out because I'm scared this girl is going to murder again. And she just fits in with the crowd. Um, she's beautiful. I'm sure she had her life ahead of her, but something definitely is not right. Um, I wonder if her mother is supporting her financially, what would make somebody steal? Now, she stole $200,000, but it wasn't just her. I read more about that. It was a couple of other Detroit corrupt uh, people, right? Um, but what I want to say about the mom is I saw a video about the mom, right? Her name is uh, Verdine Day, firefighter. Uh, she actually, I think she got a year for that. And this was an old video. And she was saying, I didn't even know that a woman could be a firefighter. And she said that when she found out that a woman could be a firefighter, she went for it. And not only did she go for it, you see, she worked her way up to the ranks. And I believe now she's like 63 years old. Do you think that Tamara Williams, her daughter, and running from the police had her become this big time thief to fund her daughter and ultimately go to jail and, and lose everything that she fought hard for, it seems like her whole life? Yeah, I think desperation would drive you to do that. You're trying to help out your daughter who's in trouble. You know, your daughter obviously killed her boyfriend, but you it's a human thing to want to help your child. So yeah, I think that makes sense to me. I that think you... that makes sense to me that you. Look, maybe 25,000, 50,000, 100,000. Listen here, turn yourself in, Tamara Williams, okay? You taking everybody down. And not only that, for real, the family of David Carter, um, a good man. How many men out here, unfortunately, are not in their child's life, right? You got a man that that. You know, his son said he's been here day one and this is what you do to this man. And so the family, they definitely need closure. Do we have a picture of her most wanted or anything so we can show like what we looking for um, when we uh, we looking for the, Tamara Williams? Yeah, I'll just go back to the. Uh, oh, where's the picture? There it is. And, and, and when you see the pictures of her and him, they look like they would be a superstar couple to uh you know i don't want to say career but we know that she had a career he had a career. two people with great futures behind them you know try a relationship i actually sent you some pictures of them too um and another clip of them and like her most wanted picture but you can even see in here that she has a big tattoo on her arm that's mm -hmm. flowers that go all the way down me at her arm right yeah, yeah, that's very distinctive. Yeah, I think that is not there anymore. With all of the money that she uh, allegedly received, what would you do? What do you try to change your appearance? She's going this far. So I think at this point, we looking for somebody with the same tattoo starting here going down, but it has been manipulated into something else. Right, you add some tattoo to it so it looks a little different, right? Add some and, and then that's that's real popular not a full arm maybe she took it down to here and maybe she even tattooed her other arm too but i would definitely um i i think that she did something to manipulate that she she can change her weight she can't really change her height right she can change her hair color mm -hmm. um with that type of money she might have been able to get some type of surgery right okay well listen it's been great having you here uh april and you're a great new member of the team um, where are you appearing next in your comedy life? Is there any place we can Thanks plug for, for you? Thanks for asking. Uh, you know what? That, that's real funny because I revealed something. I'm actually uh, going to be in Detroit September 9th for a private roast event. Um, and so I didn't really tell anybody. Uh, and then I'm back in uh, Las Vegas October 8th for an event on Fremont. 
So uh, you can always look up April Big Girl Lee uh, for the comedy, but the comedy is very, very nasty. Kind of like some of the gruesome stuff we talked about tonight, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe maybe we'll get you on to do some jokes on here at some point. Yeah, like, well, we, yeah. So we cried and we laughed, and I'm just happy to be here. Um, I have a lot of stories that you know I'm eager to share with you guys, and I just feel that we're going to definitely make a difference. Okay, that's great. All right, well, thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing everybody soon. And that was a great first show, April. And thank you, Dave and Aaron, for stopping in to hang out with us for a little bit. And we'll all, we'll see you thank guys you. all again you. very soon. Thanks, all right, guys. Bye -bye. good job, April. Thank good job, you. April.